Relax in front of the river rock fireplace or admire the stunning mountain views from the warm waters of the jacuzzi on the back deck of this plush and luxurious two-bedroom, two-bath cabin. It's perfect for beautiful skiers or snowboarders like you. And there, it's posted. Oh yeah, we're gonna be Airbnb millionaires. Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about short-term rentals. Renting out your home can be a great way to bring in some extra cash. Sometimes it can bring in enough money to completely cover the cost of your mortgage. We've always been interested in having our own short-term rental someday, so we've done a ton of research on the subject. We're here to help you decide if renting your space is right for you. We'll cover the most common questions and outline the basic process for getting started. So let's get into it. First up, how much money can I make? This can vary wildly, but it basically boils down to how many days your property is rented for and the daily rate to rent it. For us, we're hoping to travel in our van for about half the year and live in our den build for the other half. And because we like big round numbers, let's just say we'll be renting it for about 200 days each year. That means if we had a daily rate of $300, we could earn about $60,000 a year. Calculating your day rate requires a bit of research. Go through websites like Airbnb, Trivago, and Verbo and find properties that are similar to yours and also make note of any amenities. If you have a hot tub, you can totally charge more than similar properties around you that don't have a hot tub. Other amenities that can take up the price a bit include Wi-Fi, outdoor kitchens, on-site laundry, and close proximity to nearby attractions. You should also be paying attention to seasonal fluctuations. If you're renting a cabin near a ski resort, you can charge a lot more when the resort is open versus in the summertime. You can also charge more for weekends and holidays. A more dynamic pricing strategy like this will allow you to earn much more each year. It should also be noted that websites like Airbnb charge a rental platform fee, so they'll be scraping about three to 5% off of each booking. Next up is short-term rental host duties. There's a lot more that goes into being a great host than just collecting payments. Your reviews are gonna suffer greatly if you're not paying attention to how the unit is being prepped between guests. You need to leave the place looking exactly as it does in your listing photos. Also, consistency is key here. If all of your reviews mention that they loved the fresh croissants left in the kitchen on their arrival, and you forget to leave them for someone, you better believe the lack of buttery croissant deliciousness will be missed and might be mentioned in the review. You might not have specifically mentioned it, but other people have inceptioned those croissants right into your guest's brain. It should be mentioned that this story actually comes from direct experience. We didn't leave a bad review, but we were extremely disappointed to have zero flaky goodness left for us on the kitchen counter of one of our Airbnbs. Also, as a host, during your renter stay, you're on the hook for any questions they might have, like how the heck does your freaking TV remote work, or how do I light a gas stove? If you feel like those responsibilities are a bit too much, then you might want to think about hiring a management company to handle the back-end duties like bookkeeping and accounting. You can also hire a cleaning company to do the literal dirty work for you. So basically, short-term renting can be as involved or as hands-off as you like. Taxes, they're everyone's favorite topic. If you're making money on anything from rentals to running an Etsy shop to selling your juicy pineapples at the end of your driveway, you know Uncle Sam is getting in on that action. You need to report your rental income on your taxes, either through a Schedule E or Schedule C form. Assuming you're running a solo operation as a sole proprietor, your rental income is subject to the standard self-employment tax rate of 15.3%. Airbnb doesn't actually report income to the IRS until you earn over $20,000 and host 200 plus reservations, but just because they don't report it doesn't mean you're not on the hook for it. So if you're bringing in, say, $30,000 from your rental, that would mean you owe about $4,600 in taxes. That's a big chunk, but all is not lost because where there is self-employment income to be found, there are also tax write-offs. Here's a quick list of some of the most common ones. This is generally an area that you don't want to skimp on, so it's worth spending some extra time digging into this topic to make sure that all your ducks are in a row. Den has some great reading recommendations on this topic, and you can find those on denoutdoors.com. Next up, running the business. 
At this point, well, like it or not, congratulations. You are providing a service for money, so you are a business owner. Time to start acting like one. Here are some important considerations to make sure you're doing things by the books. First up, you're gonna to wanna to get a business license. So go ahead and give your local business license office a call and let Jody at the front desk know about all of your business plans, your hopes, your dreams, your ambitions, your plans for expansion, how this business will be the start of your nomadic journey to live in Thailand next year. Just kidding, obviously Jody doesn't care about any of that. She just needs to know that you're listing a rental property. She'll point you towards the property licenses you'll need, which at a minimum will be a business license, which is generally pretty easy to acquire. HOA compliance. Are you a member of an HOA? If so, it's time to find out if you live in a neighborhood full of dream crushers. Some homeowners associations forbid short-term rentals, so make sure your rental aspirations are allowed before you dream too big. Next up, business structure. What kind of business are you? This is determined by spinning a wheel of fortune type device at your local business license office with the following options listed on it. Jody will get you set up. Whichever of these options you land on determines the level of financial protection you're offered against lawsuits or claims should one ever arise. Oh, right. Or you can just consult this IRS small business structure guide, do some research and consult with a local accountant or bookkeeper to determine which type of business suits your situation. Up to you. Keeping accurate records. As with any business venture, keeping tidy records now will save you so much time when tax season rolls around. It's so easy to forget about a straightforward deduction that saves you hundreds or thousands in taxes. Here are the most obvious ones to keep tabs on. Number one, property usage. This can just be a simple Google Calendar or spreadsheet that's used to track whether your property is vacant, used by friends and family, or rented out to paying guests. This will prevent a ton of guesswork and uncertainty. Number two, property expenses. Some really straightforward expenses like supplies for the property, maintenance costs, and advertising are no-brainer deductions. But you can't deduct what you can't prove or remember. It doesn't matter if you use email filters, separate business bank accounts, or good old-fashioned photos of your receipts. Just try to keep things organized. Number three, verifying your 1099K forms. Websites like Airbnb will generally provide you with a 1099-K form to tell you how much income they reported to the IRS on your behalf. If this doesn't match your records, make sure you sort that out sooner rather than later. Insurance. Make sure your insurance company is aware that you're planning to do short-term rentals on your property. You might want to increase your overall coverage limits, or you might want to take advantage of a rider policy that your insurance company offers that specifically covers damages caused by guests or tenants. What den is right for the job? Next up is thinking about which den build is best for accommodating a short-term rental at your specific property. If you're looking to add some space to your home, say in your backyard with an accessory building, something small like the A-frame bunk cabin or the A-frame bunk plus might be a good bet. If you've got a vacant property that you want to put a large home on that's great for groups or families to rent, go with the A-frame family, A-frame house, barn house family, or barn house retreat. Or maybe you want to do a cabin community or glamp ground with a couple of units to rent out to different small groups or larger parties. A couple modern cottages would be great for this, along with a few A-frame weekenders and maybe a barn house plus as a main gathering place. Heck, you could even throw in a few saunas for those extra chargeable amenities that we mentioned earlier. When mixing and matching, the possibilities are pretty limitless. And that about wraps it up. Short-term rentals are very hot right now, but there's a lot that goes into making income with them. We'll have more resources for you down in the description and also on denoutdoors.com. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or have topics you'd like to see us cover. We've previously covered how to find land where we actually went and saw a property and learned a ton from it. And we've covered how to find a builder where we mentioned Bob the Builder way too many times. So be sure to check out those videos as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time, folks. Later, player!